Spoilers ahead for Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Episode 6. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Script Department. Today, we are going where no Script Department video has ever gone before, with a solo review. I know, I'm very lonely. Today, Brad is currently off and away planning and getting married, so he has selfishly left he, me here on my own to review episode 6 of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Lift Us Where Suffering Cannot Reach. Although, I would like to take this opportunity just to say to Brad, huge congratulations from all of us here at the script department. We hope you have a wonderful day, hope you have a wonderful life together. So it's very earnest and nice and we're going to high five over it. But this is not discovery for goodness sake. We can't be that earnest here. We're here to talk about Strange New Worlds and what an interesting episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds this was. Now, unsurprisingly, if you followed this series of reviews so far, I'm pretty positive on this series so far. I think we both have been and this episode is no exception. So let's get to it. When the USS Enterprise arrives in orbit, they are forced to very quickly intervene when an attack is ongoing with a small shuttle. It becomes apparent very quickly when the survivors beam across that this is somebody from Pike's past. And we get some lovely performances from Anson Mount and Rebecca Romaine uh, as he awkwardly giggles his way through that interaction. Uh, very, very entertaining. In true original series style, he gets reacquainted with this former love interest and becomes quickly embroiled in the politics of the planet. Um, but of course, all is not as it seems. Now, this is one of those great ethical episodes of Star Trek that delves into the shades of grey. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I love this series so much. I love Star Trek so much. It's very ethical, philosophical, uh, quite thoughtful. Um, but also science fiction as a whole, it gives you such a great opportunity to really get into these shades of grey and, and to these difficult um, philosophical and ethical quandaries. Um, just as a genre, I think it's really good. The big question here is, what would, you, what would you do to ensure your civilization's survival? These are not monsters. These people are not monsters, though Pike reacts as if they are because he disagrees with what they're doing because of his own sense of morality. Um, and they do get to make a big point about having tried to find out how this machine works and how it kind of uh, and find an alternative way of doing it to save the life of the child and all of these children that have come before. Um, what comes after that is a really interesting debate about children suffering uh, for the sake of a civilization and people looking the other way. Um, obviously, this is allegorical for our own society, uh, though it's quite, I would say, on the nose, uh, not in a bad way either, I don't think. Uh, I don't think on the nose is necessarily always a bad thing. And I think this works on, on this occasion. It's quite clear that the writers are aiming here to really level this at our own society. So, uh, you know, and the fact that we have so much built on the shoulders of those who suffer. And if you really want to look into the horrifying, distasteful areas of it, then we have obviously our own versions of this. We have sweatshops, child labor in other parts of the world um, where literally children suffer for, to, for us to live the way we do. The argument laid down here is that at least the uh, civilization on this planet acknowledged the sacrifice and acknowledged the su suffering of this child. The whole arc of this episode is supposed to be deliberately distasteful. Um, and I think it really works. I think it, it works to challenge the preconceptions of what a society is and what it is, what, how much you can put the needs of the many ahead of the needs of the few or the one, that very famous Spock um, kind of query there. Uh, kind of quote, sorry. Um, and what's preceded this big reveal is actually a fairly average episode. Um, it's got some interesting character stuff, a few ups and downs, which I'll go through in a minute. But it always feels as though it's leading you somewhere. It's a breadcrumb uh, trail that's leading to this reveal at the end. And I do think this is done intentionally to lull the audience into a false sense of security. And, you know, this is a far more cheerful episode, perhaps. And, you know, we poke a little bit of fun at the faith and importance that they put into this planet, puts into their symbolic leadership ideas. Pike even at one point kind of smirks at the idea that a planet could fall if a child wasn't installed. And, you know, this, this quite rightly leads to the communication being severed. Um, and he acknowledges the fact after that that, you know, he's, he's kind of done the wrong thing. He's insulted their society uh, and he's overstepped. But we are drip fed little bits of information here uh, to, to lead up to this mystery, the kind of the perceived terrorism, uh, the fact that Uhura um, realizes that 
the uh, that this is actually a connected planet. It's not a, a an entirely different alien species. It's a colony. It's it's very very similar, um, which is quite an interesting thing. So we drip fed this information in a in a really interesting uh, in a really interesting way. So then we get to the ending where Pike is invited to witness the ceremony. I would like to take a moment to say that it is entirely ridiculous that Pike would be invited to this. They know what they're doing is wrong. They know that the any, someone from the Federation would not be uh, in favor of this. They know all that. It's a really weird decision. Obviously, he you know it's a, it's a plot contrivance. He needs to be there in order to have this climax, so so we can see what's happening, and we can kind of you know this whole episode comes to a head over this. Um, but this is a plot contrivance, which is utterly ludicrous in this situation. However, um, at this stage of the episode, the tone really does take a hard left turn. Uh, you can see this optimism that we've had this whole time. This wonderful kid uh, who will ascend has been sort of happy, smiley, and clever, and he's really excited to take on his new role and everything like that. And you literally see the optimism and the joy and the innocence fall away from his face. It's an amazing performance from this kid, actually. Like the, You see it just drip away from him as he's looking at the mangled, decayed, traumatized remains of his predecessor. It's like, it's horror. It's horror level stuff that we have just suddenly had injected into this reasonably kind of optimistic and quite playful episode. Um, you know, you look at the Lahan and Ahura stuff, um, all of the kind of training things and, and the rules and stuff like that. It's pretty cheerful. It's pretty upbeat. It's certainly in those elements. And then we get this that comes in and just totally floors us um and i think that this this only really works if you have that optimism and that kind of tone earlier on if you've if you've been uh considering the fact that this is going to take go really really badly from the word go this doesn't have that gut punch it doesn't have the horrifying kind of feeling to it and i think this is a great screenwriting technique i think this is absolutely what this is it is this is subverting the audience expectation it's utilizing what we think is happening based on what we've seen before in star trek you know the the we we're quite used to the there being occasional sort of optimistic and less serious episodes and um and then there being you know really really intense ones so they're utilizing what we would expect from that to subvert audience expectations and then they're utilizing what we think is going to happen to uh and what they believe the tone of the episode is to then deliver this emotional blow it's a great way of making something like this a real moral quandary and making it really 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 effective um and the writers of this episode utilize that just so brilliantly um but a lot more goes on here and we see this subversion in a sense with dr mbenga asking this far more advanced civilization to give him medical assistance with his daughter the federation's general order one uh, at the time, it was during Strange New Worlds, I'm pretty sure it's General Order 1, um, and the, what will eventually become the Prime Directive is a mainstay of Star Trek lore and has often caused problems for various captains and ships and space stations. Um, but usually it's Starfleet or the Federation refusing help to others based on their superior uh, technology and that moral imperative. But here, we see a character that we really, really care about ask for help and be refused using that exact same rule. We feel the Doctor's pain as this happens, and we feel his desperation, because it's all been set up in a previous episode. We've established his connection to his child. But the superior Doctor knows and is honour-bound to do exactly what the Federation standards would make him do as well, and he refuses to treat the patient, even though he knows he can cure her. Um, then finally, we get to the end of this, and uh, he he goes back on this a little bit, and he does say he'll walk the doctor, Doctor Mbenga, through the theory behind the treatment. Uh, so hopefully he can cure the child. And you know this comes from growth, which links and and growth in in um in his character, which links directly to the episode sort of moral themes. We exist in a morally grey universe, the Star Trek universe, albeit it's a, a very happy go lucky an adventurous place a lot of the time, especially if you watch Discovery, but it is, <laughs> but it is very morally grey. Um, and sometimes, despite our best efforts and intentions, people suffer, and we get things terribly wrong, and, and the, the characters get things terribly wrong. And sometimes there have to be compromises in order to make the best decisions. 
For example, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. Spock, again. Um, if we look at the final shots of this, we can see Elder Gamal, this, this superior doctor, has lost his son. He has failed completely in what he set out to do. But there is some optimism in his future in the sense that he's going to hopefully help help them save the next one, as it were. Um, but he also finds a way to be at peace through helping Dr. Mbenga with his problem. He compromises. He compromises his ethical standard in order to help for the good. Then we see this mirror image of Captain Pike as he stares into space drinking his whiskey. He's traumatized by what he's seen because, well, because you would be, um, but also because it goes totally against his personal beliefs. He's been betrayed by Alora. Um, he's been, you know, devastatingly uh, thrown off course in this way. He is inflexible and it burns him. Now, of course, the truth of the situation is that he's traumatized because of what he's seen. And, and you know, it, 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 and quite rightly, he is, he is, I think most audience members would agree he is right to be morally repulsed by what's going on there, but he isn't able to give any answer to Alora when she says to him, are you telling me that your Federation do not have children suffering? You're telling me that doesn't happen anywhere? He, he isn't able to do that. He isn't able to give this, um, this answer. And, so he, and he literally at one point shakes his head. It's a great bit of performance. Shakes his head, shakes off that question to cling to his moral superiority of the Federation of Starfleet. He dismisses all of that out of hand, and the Shades of Grey argument entirely disappears in favour of that black and white world view. This is a really, really great episode for the screenwriting character beats, but also it's really great to see that mirror image reflected in those themes. You see so much great um, theme work and tone work really weaved through this episode to give us great to give us these great character beats to give us these great kind of um, bits of development i'm not sure we've seen pike challenged like this yet um it's one thing to know your own future it's one thing to see what happens to you in the future and to live with that trauma of what's coming but it's a very very different thing to see the trauma and suffering of another especially a child and to be completely unable to do anything about that um so yeah, a great episode, I think. Really, really well written. A clever piece of science fiction. And also utilising the, the science fiction idea to its absolute height by making these, uh, these moral quandaries really interesting to delve into in a, in a different way. It's allegory, it's uh, metaphor and things like that. So there we go. That was the script department review for Strange New Worlds Episode 6, Lift Us Up, Where, we're, where Suffering Cannot Reach. If you enjoyed this episode, you can go back through our other Strange New Worlds review videos. Uh, I'm usually joined by the soon-to-be wedded Brad, uh, but if uh, but we do have some playlists as well. If you want to check out all of our other Star Trek content, you can find them in one handy location on YouTube. Uh, and if you like what you're seeing here today, then please feel free to uh, check us out over the scriptdepartment.net with our global network of screenwriters. Um, we, we do all kinds of interesting things over there, so keep an eye on us and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep you up to date if you do. And if you really, really want to support us, then you could consider buying us a coffee. You can check out the links in the show notes uh, or in the description on YouTube below, uh, and you can find out a little bit what that means and things like that. So thanks very much once again for watching. We really appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see you very soon. Woo!